Hey guys, this is William Everett here with Free Salon Education and I'm just going to be showing you a couple of different dry cutting techniques I use. So first off, I'm going to be using my texturizing scissor. It's reversible and depending on which side the blade go, is up or down, depends whether or not the hair buckles under or goes up. So right now, I'm going to sit here and take a section and this is for clients who have a lot of bulk in their hair that you're not really wanting to lose any length off of, but just kind of collapse the shape. What you can do is take your dry texturizing scissor and go in and push up, come back down, go in and push up, come back in, go down and push up. As you comb it out, it'll sit there and help collapse the shape throughout here. And that way you don't have to go in and keep on point cutting everything like that. Another one, that I like to do is not many people know how to necessarily use texturizing scissors a lot. There is a lot of theory about it, about creating layers within layers. So when I have a lot of clients come to me and they're scared of them, it's normally because the hairdresser will go in and keep going down multiple times. And what's that do? what that is doing? It's creating lines throughout your graduation. And so normally I'll never go in horizontally. Instead, what I'll do is I always like to go vertically and then buckle my hands so you can see the different weight spots where you want to take it out and then go in at a diagonal and take it out or go in straight vertically, depending on how much weight you want to take out of the hair. So now I'm switching over to my blunt shear. It's a Mizutani Puffin. I think I'm using the six and a half. But another technique I like to do are triangles are really big right now. And so a lot of people see these haircuts where you can almost see um, all the layering and the movement come to a point. So how I like to do that is go through and channel cut. And what I'll do is go in and as I'm doing that, I'm just moving my thumb all the way down to the tips. And then I comb it out and go back through in that same section. So what that is doing is creating a point where you can see how the hair will now move into that for you. You can also go through again and just channel a lot of the weight out, moving through at different parts. But the biggest thing about this technique is you wanna make sure your thumb's moving because if you're just going through and not closing the blade and ripping through the hair, you're gonna create a lot of frizz that a lot of clients are gonna get irritated for you out eventually. And the other thing too, is that you're gonna go through in the roots. And if you just start to pull through instead of actually cut, some of the roots will actually start to push out and create unnecessary volume. Is a technique I also like to do mainly in the back is go through with the channel cutting. And what I'll do is I'll go through and what this is taking out is a lot of the underneath weight. And I'll move all to one side. And then go through and move again. The one thing about this is it's meant to be close towards the roots, so it's almost like an undercut. So once you have that, it'll sit there and help collapse the shape even more. And if you need it to, you can create volume with this as well. And one more thing, if you have a bob that you like to be graduated, instead of using the comb, you can take a section and just move your hand up as you keep going out. And that'll help give you some nice graduation too. Thank you guys so much. This is William Everett again with Free Salon Education.